it's Earth Day today. And I figured, what better honest review to make on Earth Day than of the original Ice Age? So about a month ago, I reviewed the sixth film in the Ice Age franchise, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. And I promised myself that eventually I'd go through and review every single one of them. Because, let's face it, I've seen every single one of them. And don't worry, I did not lose my sanity on every last one of them. I lost one bit of sanity on the last film before Adventures of Buck Wild. So, um, keep that in mind. But, uh, I asked a friend of mine, Cash Young, whether or not I should review the Ice Age films, and he said yes. So... I figured, why the heck not? So let's talk about the Ice Age franchise, and we're going to start with the first one, seeing as how it's Earth Day and uh, the polar ice caps are changing. I figured, why not talk about a movie about ice? So again, spoilers, and uh, yeah, enjoy the review. So, what is the plot of Ice Age? Well, a migration is taking place with all the animals of the Ice Age, including a giant woolly mammoth named Manfred, a.k.a. Manny, who is voiced by Ray Romano. He bumps into a ground sloth named Sid, who is voiced by John Leguizamo. And uh, they don't really get along. Manny is the stern and... Very, uh, like, contempt. Like, he's trying to get to places without any interruptions, and Sid is just an annoying little brat. Unfortunately, they come across a gang of saber-toothed tigers who attack a human village, leaving a baby and his mother to die, with only the mother seemingly drowning, with Manny and Sid in the care of not only her baby, Roshan, that is his name, but also one of the members of the Sabretooth Tiger Gang named Diego, voiced by Dennis Leary. These three don't really get along, but they have to learn to get along on a journey of unproportionate reasons, or something like that. So... I said when I was reviewing the Ice Age Adventures of Black Wild that I had a hard time discussing what the story was, but here I didn't really have that much of a challenge because the story is very easy to remember because it's a plot that, you know, doesn't suck hard. And the reason why is because it's actually a genuinely smart animated film. It was also Blue Sky's first animated film back in 2002. They had previously worked on building character models of the M&Ms in the M&M commercials, which I love, and one day you might see me talk about them in some way or another. But they also, yeah, this was their first animated film, and it led to a, gosh, nearly 20-year-long, like, list of animated films before Disney bought out Fox and canceled the Blue Sky program. And their last, the last thing they ever worked on, I say Scrat Tales, was released uh, a week ago, so I, I still haven't seen it, but I will check it out. But uh, I have major respect for Blue Sky for not only making a, a new franchise or a new animated film that kids can watch that isn't made by Disney or Pixar and isn't heavily mediocre like a lot of the Warner Brothers animated films at the time. We did have movies like The Iron Giant, but uh, this was an original idea that, uh, that left kids to get out of the crutches of Disney, which doesn't really work out now because Disney owns Fox and the Ice Age franchise, and what they're doing with it is just despicable. But uh, yeah, well, let's just move on to other aspects of the film. So, the characters are really great. The trio focuses on, of course, Manny, Sid, and Diego. Let's talk about Manny first. So, as I said, he's voiced by Ray Romano. He's got a very tragic backstory revealed that he actually lost his family to 
humans, I think. Yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, he lost his family. So he's very stern and he's very just heartbroken and he's just the grumpiest dude on earth until he learns to open up and gaining some friends within Sid and Diego. Speaking of Sid and Diego, we'll talk about Sid first. Sid is a character that you shouldn't really like because he's written to be annoying. And, but like, you know, you get a lot of love for him. He's got really funny moments. He's voiced by a great actor, John Leguizamo, who was coming off of several big projects like he was in regarding henry and he was also in moulin rouge and baz Luhrmann's romeo and juliet so he was uh he had a name for himself and i forget the the one man show movie he was in you know what i'm gonna go look that up right now the pest is what it was called and he was also in several other projects like uh the super mario brothers films spawn yeah so he was a he was a relatively well known actor, and he gave one of the funniest performances I've ever seen in an animated film. He's got a very unique voice, which gives for a lot of comedy. It should be annoying, but again, John Leguizamo just is that great of an actor where it's not annoying. My favorite character of the trio is Diego, as he has the most complex of an arc. And he's got, you know, he's he's very, at first he starts off as like a villain and then he learns to grow. And his, uh, like, his telling the, the other two that the other saber-toothed tigers are coming for them, it doesn't feel forced or anything. It genuinely feels like he's, he's, he's grown close to these people and he doesn't want to see them get hurt. And his uh, sacrifice... Uh, towards the end and i knew he would come back but like it felt genuine and it felt like good writing and it was downright beautiful now we got to talk about roshan because oh god if you somehow didn't know there was a time when several people on the internet were hating towards roshan who is a character that is not annoying in my opinion he serves his purpose, but he isn't the worst. He is not the worst. I don't know why people started hating him. And uh, it's weird. It really is weird. You know, people on the internet can be weird. They're the same people who started the Shrek memes. Sorry. Then we have the Saber Two Tiger Gang. Uh, Soto is the villain. And he can be done right threatening. And he is just, I mean, he is like a, a Saber Two Tiger, so he's like literally the same as Diego. It's more of Diego's movie. But uh, in the end, he was still a good villain, and his death is very satisfying when he finally just gets those icicles in his chest. With that being said, there are some celebrity cameos here. I don't remember the characters' names. I do know Jack Black is in it. He voices a character called Zeke. And then Diedrich Bader is also in it. I forget this character's name, but he's in it. Look it up. That being said, all of those characters are not my favorites. I'm pulling a Snow White and the Seven Doors on you. My favorite character is Scratz. Sorry. Hail to the king, baby. Scrat is a very, very, very funny character. He's voiced by one of the Blue Sky pioneers. His name's Chris Wedge. This character, honestly, is very original. He just wants to search for his acorn. And for the theatrical films, they would have the trailers be Scrat's shenanigans. And we finally get a Scrat's animated series on Disney Plus, which is also the last thing Blue Sky ever animated. And uh, it should give closure to the uh, wonderful Lord because he was not in the Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild, which was devastating. Not even a cameo, not even one second, which is just sad. 
So yeah, the characters are really good, and I recommend watching the movie just for these character interactions. And now we're going to get to the animation. Okay, the movie is 20 years old this year. The animation quality has been said to have been a little, you know, kind of bad, but I'm going to just say it. The animation in this film at least tried. And it was improved upon in the future sequels. Much like with Toy Story, the animation is great because it gets its job done. And that is the biggest compliment I can give it. Other than that, for a 2002 animated film, yeah, it looks pretty good. There are a lot of moments here with memorable character designs with you know, the characters, like, you know, the main characters and the dodo birds that appear sometime later in the movie and then the ice slide. The animation really does the job done, gets the job done, and it is very original and it would get improved upon in the future sequels, which is a good thing. So I give the animation a big plus. The music was done by a descent of the sun of Alfred Newman, a composer, David Newman. He did the score to this movie. I think my favorite parts of the score, I mean, I love the uh, travel music at the at the beginning, but I also love the use of the song Send Me On My Way. I mean, I heard that song a lot on road trips. And my mom was, uh, she played that song like a lot. Sorry, mom, exposing you on YouTube. She played that song like a lot, but this time I feel like it's used really, really well, and it does give a sense of adventure with the characters, and there's moments in the score which reflect the emotion, and uh, sometimes it got me a little bit emotional. Maybe if I watch the movie again, I might tear up, because I've been tearing up recently at a lot of movies. I teared up at... at... uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, and then at uh, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. I will review the Fantastic Beasts movies very, very soon. So, I've got nothing else but praise for Ice Age. It's an original animated film that gets the job done. It's cute, which is the most important part, and it serves its purpose. If you want to watch a movie that wasn't primarily made by Disney or Pixar, even though Disney owns Ice Age now, check out Ice Age. You're not going to regret it. I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a wonderful film, and it deserves to be mentioned a lot more, especially considering the fact that it was destroyed earlier. Well, that was it for this honest review. What are your thoughts on Ice Age? If you would like to let me know, please give your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will continue on with the Ice Age honest reviews very, very soon with the meltdown. Uh, I'm Going to also make honest reviews for Sonic the Hedgehog and its sequel, and then obviously the Fantastic Beast movies, and then I'm going to make an honest review on the Hotel Transylvania trilogy, the Northmen. There are a lot of honest reviews planned. So happy Earth Day, and happy and almost end of April, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Goodbye.